Hey, what's up guys, Jakey here. So somebody left a comment on my video asking me to do a movement guide, and it is something that I've wanted to do for a while now. So in today's video, I'm gonna be doing pretty much like movement tips and tricks coming from a Radiant player. And I don't really have a script for this video. I'm just gonna be rambling and giving you guys some tips and tricks. But first of all, the biggest tip that I can give is to just play the game. As you play the game, your movement will improve and your game sense and aim and everything will also improve. So the main thing is just to play the game more. But second is to watch pro players and top streamers as well. If you want to improve your movement, just watch the way pro players move and the way they peak angles and then try to imitate that. Um, obviously try to understand why they're peaking the way they are and then try to imitate the way that they move and the way they peak. And uh, that's another way to improve as well. But I'm gonna be giving you guys some tips and tricks that I can uh, personally give. So starting off here, with the first tip is when you're peaking angle, you want to make sure you're as far away from the angle as possible um, because this will make sure that you have the advantage when you're doing a peak. And the reason for this is, let's say, for example, I'm fighting this A main angle. If I'm right up against this wall and I'm peaking the angle like this and there's somebody holding me, they actually see my shoulder before I see them. So like right around here, if I'm like peaking like this, you can see that my shoulder and like my elbow is sticking out of the wall. And the enemy is actually able to see that before I can see anything. But if you back up further away from the angle, you give yourself a lot more of an even fight. That's like the same concept here if you're fighting dice into the A main angle. If you're right up against the dice box, hugging it like this and you swing, they're able to see you first before you are able to see them. But if you're further back and you swing out like this, then you're giving yourself a lot more uh, of an even fight. So that's why you want to be further away from angles when you swing. Another thing is when you're peaking an angle, you want to make sure you're giving yourself two full steps before you fully swing out. What I mean by this is you don't want to be like right up on the angle and then just peeking out like this and shooting because your movement is going to be a lot slower. So a big one that this applies to is this cat fight to tiles. A lot of people will be right up against the barrier here when it drops and then they'll just swing out like this and they'll get instantly bopped because their movement is really slow because they're not giving their character enough time to fully get like full momentum out on the swing. So you're actually like, if you're doing only one step out and swinging like this, this is a one step peak right here. If you're doing a one step peak, uh, your movement and your momentum on your character is gonna be a lot slower than if you do a full two step peak, which is where you back up a little bit further from the angle and you give your character enough momentum, two steps in order to get that full movement speed, right? So you get the full move speed on the swing and you're a lot harder to hit when you peek out on your enemy screen. But if you're do only doing a one step peek, you're gonna be a lot slower. Okay, so another thing is uh, jump peeking and jump spotting is really important, especially in higher elos. Um, I made a full video guide on how to jump peek properly, which I'll leave in the description. But basically the TLDR is uh, jump peeking, you can bait out op shots and you can also get a lot of information on angles. So if I wanted to like jump peek this, cause here. maybe there's an op here holding me, or I'm not sure if there's anyone here holding me or not, and I just want to get that info. Um, I can do a jump peek, so you want to approach the angle at a 45 degree. And then you basically want to hold W, jump in the air, and then uh, strafe back with the opposite key, so S and A. So you basically want to go like this, and this is how you would do a jump peek right here. So you just watch like my keyboard overlay, and you can sort of get an idea of how to do it. But you basically just want to use the forward momentum on the jump to carry you forward to peak the angle and then use your uh, strafe keys and your s key to bring you back into safety and that's basically how you do a jump peak and then moving on to movement in gunfights so when you're shooting people i have a really good clip that showcases the importance of strafing between your bursts it's uh, a clip on like pearl i think where i was playing cypher holding down the b site and they're all running up to me uh, at long b and if you look at it and you didn't know my rank, you would think that the enemy team is bots, but that was a Radiant Lobby. And the reason why I'm able to make them look like bots and they're just whiffing on me is because I'm shooting and then I'm strafing in between my bursts. So that's really important. Um, when you take a duel in Valorant, you don't want to instantly crouch spray. I know you've probably heard that a lot. That's something that is uh, pretty bad in Valorant, is just instantly crouching and spraying because you're committing yourself to the fight. And if you whiff the fight, you're pretty much dead. And also, even if you get the kill, and you're still like crouched like this, it's very easy for somebody to just uh, swing out and trade you out. And it's very hard for you to convert a second kill. So when you're taking fights, you want to be bursting and then you want to strafe in between the bursts. So you, you sort of burst like this, get that kill, and then you're strafing. And the reason you're strafing is mainly to become a harder target to hit, but it also helps you 
time your shots and reset your burst recoil. So when you're shooting in between your bursts, you pretty much get like this timing down and then you know when your recoil is ready to be reset and you know when it's good to take another shot. You see how I'm like messing up sometimes and my bullets going off to the side? You want to avoid that. But yeah, that's pretty much the main advantages of strafing between bursts. That's something you always want to do in Valorant. So don't commit yourself to like a crouch spray because that's really bad. What you want to do is you just want to shoot and then if you miss, you strafe. If you kill them, you also strafe. Just get into the habit of shooting at somebody and then doing a little movement in between and getting ready to fight the next person. Okay, so that's something you can do in the range against the bots. That's uh, like just go into the practice range, load out some bots, and then you can kill a bot, strafe, and then move to another bot. Really important you learn how to do that. Another big part of movement is uh, silent spotting or silent jumping. So silent jumping is good for spotting an angle without making any noise. Let's say I'm playing back dice here and I want to jump spot into A main. Instead of jumping like this where I'm making noise, you can do a silent jump spot where you hold your crouch key, jump up, and while you're midair, you let go of crouch. So let go of crouch, just like that. This is how you do a silent jump spot. So you can see I'm making absolutely zero noise here, but I'm still getting that info. Okay, so another really important skill to learn is like these little jiggle pre-fires that you can do um, and knowing how to swing people. So let's say like you have an enemy here that you don't want to fully commit a fight to. Knowing how to do these little like jiggle pre-fires uh, while backing up into different angles or just like getting ready to do sort of a pop and swing is really important. So you know Poppin how he got really famous for like wide swinging people? The reason why that works is because you throw off your enemy's crosshair placement by getting them to hold tight and then if your enemy is like super undisciplined with their movement and they're doing like they commit to crouch sprays a lot then the pop and swing works really well against them so doing like these little jiggle pre-fires really tight to get your opponent to hold tight on you like this and then going in with a wide swing is really really good that's why the pop and swing is so effective like you do a little couple of jiggles here get them to hold tight and then you wide swing um, and it's really really strong but also doing the pre-fires here just to get chip damage or like getting a lucky kill on your opponent is really good as well this is something that a lot of high elo players do that is actually pretty hard to master is doing like this little jiggle pre-fire uh into the corner here yeah doing that and then knowing when to swing and how to swing again you when you swing you want to take that two step swing and then you can go into a wide swing here or you can do uh, a little shadow pre-fire so movement like that is very important to learn but it's really hard to explain it's just something you have to practice and use in game and you'll just kind of get better at it over time um, I think another really important part of movement is spatial awareness and just knowing where everything is. You'll see it like a lot of new players and this happened to me when I was coming back to uh, CSGO or CS2 rather for the first time in a while. Like I kind of lost track of where all the objects were on the map and I started bumping into stuff. I started getting stuck on corners and this is something that uh, a lot of new players and a lot of lower elo players will do just because they're not really familiar with the map and they're not really good with spatial awareness. This just comes with a lot of hours into the map, um, like just putting a lot of hours into the game and just knowing where everything is, like being able to move around a site without, you know, looking where you're going, like side strafing and then not bumping into anything just comes with playing the game a lot and having good spatial awareness. So that's another important part of movement as well. Oh yeah, one more thing to talk about is um, the way you peak angles, right? So uh, let's say I'm swinging the cat angle from tiles. When you're swinging an angle, you always want to go side to side. Okay, it's so like A, D movement. Like you want to go D and then, you know, obviously counter strafe with A or let go of your movement key with D and then fight the angle like this instead of like holding two keys at once to swing an angle. So like what I mean by this is when you're peeking something, you always want to be holding one movement key. So that's either D or A and then you peek the angle. Instead of going like holding W and D at the same time, peaking the angle, moving like with two direction keys. That's really bad. And the reason that's bad is just because you have more keys to let go of. If you're holding W and D, you have to let go of both keys before you're able to shoot. And that just creates a lot of room for error and it just makes your reaction time a little bit slower. So peaking properly would be just be using one key. So you only have one key to focus on. So yeah, use one, use like one movement key to peek out and then you can counter strafe or you can just let go of the key. Really up to you. Demon one doesn't counter strafe. So counter strafing is not really necessary. It's just like a habit if you're coming from CS um, 
or whatever, or you just learn the game counter strafing, then you can counter strafe. But yeah, you just want to use one movement key to peek an angle. Same thing if I'm peeking mid here, I want to be holding only D, right? Only D, and then using A to counter strafe, or I'm just like letting go of the key to take these aim duels. It's up to preference, but when you're taking duels on an angle, just use one movement key instead of holding two, like W, A, w and D, and then moving up like this. That's really bad. When you're clearing angles, just use one movement key. And yeah, I mean, I don't know. There's really not much else to talk about. I think those are like the main points, um, the main tips and tricks that I can give to people. It, the main thing is just to play the game more and watch the way pro players play and the way they move. And you can try and imitate that. Hopefully that helps you guys out. If you like the video, make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.